Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Hello friends, today we are starting with the first talk of our course soft skills development and we will be focusing on understanding the communicative environment and uh, the reason for that is because uh, this is a very very important component uh, of the course. I will tell you about that in a few minutes from now, but uh, let us have a look at uh, the overview in the next 30 minutes or so, we will be looking at uh, the following areas and I uh, will <coughs> be explaining the details of these to you, but uh, more important than that before we begin the course, there are a few things about the course that uh, I will ask you to listen to very carefully. The first point is that uh, please refer to the discussion forum again and again, because that is where the various activities, the quizzes the surveys, the interactions will be taking place and the vital links for those will be also provided there. In our course, surveys will play a very important role and it is expected that uh, you will be taking some of the surveys okay, and uh, they have a certain amount of weightage in terms of marks along with uh, your quiz questions, weekly uh, quiz questions. Then you have quizzes of course and we will have uh, as I promised a number of other social media activities and uh, these uh, we will be announcing in the discussion forum from time to time. And when it comes to <coughs> the, uh, the various other aspects of the course, please refer to the introductory video and also to the, the written uh, course components which have been already provided uh, in order to identify what we are going to do periodically each week. But as I told you right at the beginning the first week our focus is going to be on communication. The same is going to happen in the second and the third week as well. In fact, uh, focusing on some of the aspects which have been highlighted right here in this PowerPoint is something which is going to be very, very important uh, for the first few weeks of the course. Now, let me share quickly with you the relationship between soft skills and communication. In some sense, soft skills uh, can be considered a superset and communication a subset of that set. And uh, as you can see, if we go for a quick definition of what soft skills are, you look at social graces, which means etiquette, the way you interact with people and the various kinds of emotional and cognitive traits that you display, these constitute social graces. Communication abilities refer to your abilities to communicate through various channels like uh, verbal, non-verbal. Uh, visual, auditory and we shall discuss that in a detailed way at a later point of time. Language skills um, do not need much explanation, but the other things obviously are a part of soft skills, but as I have highlighted over here, these are some of the important soft skills which relate to communication and we are going to do that in the first couple of weeks in a very detailed way. Now, if we want to define soft skill as opposed to hard skills, Soft skills are difficult to measure, difficult to quantify because they refer to uh, your qualitative traits, uh, your personality, your emotions, the way you display them and all that. Whereas hard skills are measurable. For instance, how good you are as a computer programmer or let us say how good a mechanical engineer you are or how good are you at editing something. Now, these are skills which are easy to measure and quantify. So, having differentiated between the two and highlighted the significance of uh, uh, communication in the context of soft skills. Now, let us begin with uh, the fundamental question what is communication. Now, there are certain questions uh, which are very easy to answer in one sense and very difficult to answer in another sense. For instance, if I ask you a question like what is life, then it is probably very easy to answer in a certain sense. You will have a wide range of uh, definitions 
but then again because of that it is very difficult to answer. So, instead of uh, trying to identify what exactly communication is, let us try to explore it and look at some of its components and probably we will get a better idea and a grip of what communication basically means. The first point I would like to point uh, present uh, or indicate is we must differentiate between communication where somebody intends to communicate as opposed to communication where somebody does not intend to communicate. Now, this is going to be very very significant as we move on to certain aspects of nonverbal communication, body language because these get linked to telling lies, telling truth and we would hopefully have some very enjoyable games related to that as we proceed with this course. But uh, overt is explicit, covert is something which you do not want to communicate, but nonetheless you manage to communicate. Somebody feels angry, does not want to show it, but it gets reflected on his face. Now, that in a certain way would be covert communication, the way we want to understand it in this particular context. Covert communication can also mean communicating secretly with somebody, that is also a possibility where you are communicating explicitly with a group of people, but secretly with another uh, category of people, but that is not our focus over here. Here, uh, unintentional communication is something which is considered very significant, because in day to day social behavior very often we communicate things we do not want to, do not intend to or we are misunderstood or we miscommunicate and hence this becomes a very very significant aspect of communication. Sleeping, now the next point is that can you think of a situation where somebody is not communicating anything and the thing which immediately comes to our mind is that somebody is sleeping, but the very fact that somebody manages to communicate that she is sleeping means that uh, communication still works over here. Then you might argue that well what about death, somebody is dead, we can always say that uh, at least we are able to identify that this person is dead. The person who is sleeping might be dreaming, so in some sense although he is not communicating with us, he is in some sort of a communication with herself or himself. In case of death, the person is no longer in a position to communicate with us, but at least we get to know about his state of affairs. So, his body or his lack of life and uh, the, the static body does manage to communicate something to us. So, again that is very very significant and we need to be aware of it. Now, one of the interesting things when we are talking about covert communication or communication where we do not intend to is uh, the example of let us say detective stories as in case of uh, stories of Sherlock Holmes. You see a part of the evidence, a part of the communication is presented, but somewhere you find that the lines have been erased. So, the detective's job is to kind of uh, put the erased lines in place to complete the erased line, so that uh, the communication process is complete. At the end of the story, you find the detective very often explaining whether it is Sherlock Holmes or Hercule Poirot, uh, explaining how he has been able to identify the missing link. So, you find that uh, even in when we are looking at uh, the context of uh, uh, fun or exciting adventures uh, other than day to day life, we find that uh, communication whether implicit or explicit is something with which we play around and it is very very important especially covert communication, because there is always a challenge to find out something when people do not want to communicate to you. Now, that is a very very interesting aspect of communication and we will discuss some of it as we proceed. Now, what communicates? What is it that communicates? The body communicates, actions, non actions, the lack of action we talked about a dead body, they communicate, words communicate, silence also communicates, somebody is angry does not speak, silence also communicates, dress communicates, the environment, the various things that are around they communicate, images and things communicate, music communicates. You can in fact uh, sit down to make a list of various things that communicate and uh, you would be surprised to probably find that uh, there is hardly anything which does not communicate. If you look around yourself right now, you will find probably that everything that is there manages to provide some information to you okay. and in that sense uh, every object or lack of object in for that matter has the potential of communicating within a particular context. 
and these are things which uh, we will discuss as significant because by now probably you have already realized that uh, communication is not simple communication is complex and we will just touch upon some of these complexities and related to soft skills and why they are significant in the context of soft skills now to begin with uh, we have we talked about multiple channels of communication i talked about channels of communication without defining it a little earlier what they mean basically is that communication can take place in various ways let's say that the body can be considered as a channel for communication your voice your speech your text in a similar way let us say that uh, your facial expressions if you are looking at the electronic medium somebody typing that can be considered as a channel of communication so when we are looking at the channels of communication there can be many okay and uh, sometimes they can be in union they can be compatible some other times they can act in a way which are contradictory to one another let us say that you are smiling but you are not happy so there are two channels okay you are saying words which are harsh but you are smiling or you are saying things which are polite but you look angry so there are two channels and they are in conflict with one another so as i told you a little earlier uh, your communication can be difficult ambiguity now, ambiguity is something where communication is not very clear now if you are looking at this uh, particular short poem known as a haiku a japanese uh, form by jack kerouac you find that uh, the lines are difficult to understand snow in my shoe abandoned sparrow's nest now unless unless you contextualize it unless you understand what uh, let us say a haiku is supposed to do the meaning of the poem is ambiguous one of the possible ways that you can interpret the poem is by saying something like this that when one looks at the snow which is in the shoe right now it looks like a abandoned sparrow's nest so uh, there is a metaphor there is a sudden striking resemblance between the two that has been discovered by the poet and depicted there now that is how uh, haikus actually are supposed to express a moments realization a moments deep realization or surprised realization or wonderful realization but unless we get the context unless we know this background we are in a position not to make sense out of it now poems in general are ambiguous because you can interpret it in different ways for instance i interpreted it in a particular way now but there is always a possibility that you would interpret it in a different way in your own way you are free to do that with poems and that brings us to the third thing which we are talking about interpretation what does exactly uh, interpretation mean in the communicative context interpretation is making sense and when we make sense of things or messages within a communicative context then a number of other things play a significant role in determining how we understand the message and that is interpretation we will talk about interpretation a little later and uh, uh, here uh, we give an example of that in the jaina tradition in the indian tradition we have a very well known story of uh, six blind men who wanted to discover or to define experience what an elephant was like obviously they touched different parts of the elephant and came up with different answers to what it was like so their definitions varied somebody said it's like a tree somebody else like a snake or a wall depending on which part of the body they touched or hard and pointed somebody touching the tusks or like a saucer touching the ears or like the roof touching the belly of the elephant so you see that uh, this is interpretation now very often uh, although it's uh, it's an exaggerated example very often when you are looking at the any uh, any object in any context any message in any context uh, unless it is very definite defin uh, very definite there can be maybe more than one possible interpretations and uh, the interpretations will also vary from context to context the same object when let's say put in one context would give rise to one way of looking at it in a different context it would look different for example a glass uh, in light and the same glass in darkness or semi darkness are presented presenting two different uh, visuals of the same thing so the interpretation the experience of the two visuals would be very very different so interpretation is going to play a very significant role especially in the socio cultural contexts when we have transactions with people 
when we interact with people, when we have group dynamics coming into play, assessing, guessing what somebody means. So, this is a key term which will come in again and again as we proceed. We have already talked about channels of communication, here are illustrations uh, of the channels that I was talking about. Okay. Words could be spoken, written, non words could also be channels like sounds, colors, light, images and objects, body, environment, even digital signals. Okay. These get or the way that uh, fiber optic line which is communicating this or the wireless which is communicating, anything through which a message can get communicated is to be considered a channel. So, if I am using sign language for deaf and dumb people, okay, that also happens to be a channel of communication. So, anything uh, if I am using a painting then that becomes a channel of communication, all these can be defined as channels of communication. Now, I know that uh, it might look a little imposing, but you see that for pretty long time people have been trying to create models of communication. So, we will not go into the details of these models, but uh, a quick look uh, would suffice. The first the basic most rudimentary is where you recognize that in any kind of, kind of a communication there is a sender and a receiver, but that is not good enough. You must have a message so and a channel a medium through which this message is to be communicated. If you are talking about let us say telephone then wires, if you are talking about two people talking to one another then the sound of their voices that is the channel and whatever they articulate is the message. And then we move on to transactional models where the interaction it is not just one way going from one direction to the other, but it is a process, uh, process where two people are interacting. So, there is a this way and that way communication that comes in. And more recently we have constructionist model Goffman, many other theorists including linguists talk about noise decoding and coding channel feedback. And we will look at some of these issues in a moment from now. So, this is a very simple uh, example of the process of communication, where we have a sender and we have a receiver. But you see that you can always reverse the process the receiver can become the sender and the sender can become the receiver. In this way you see that uh, a linear uh, mode becomes a transactional mode of communication, because if I am speaking to you uh, then you are responding to me, then it no longer is a linear process of communication. For instance, today now you are listening to my talk, this is in some sense a linear communication, because I am the sender of the message and you are the receiver of the message, I am the speaker and you are the listener, but the moment we have a discussion then it becomes non-linear, because you are responding to the various things I have done, I am trying to respond to your queries and it becomes a non-linear mode of communicating. The infinite model kind of captures this uh, and uh, this uh, humorously uh, has certain implications. You see that if we start uh, looking at why people started to communicate, uh, then we find that uh, people started communicating to make things easier, to make life easier communication is a process of cooperating in many instances that is the initial reason why we communicate to make things happen. If I am not able to do something somebody else does it for me, we collaborate and for doing all these things for a society to be built up for a civilization to be built up communication becomes essential. But in the process if we look carefully we find that at no point of time has communication come down or diminished. The more we communicate the more there is the need to communicate. I remember a time uh, almost 20 years back or 18 years back when I joined the IIT uh, system, when uh, I used to write uh, letters, postcards, drop a postcard, two postcards a day to maybe my parents, to some of my friends. Now, we have a situation where on an average uh, we at least receive 50 to 25 to 50 emails a day and respond to at least 10 to 15 of them and we have SMS, we have telephone. So, if you are looking at the amount of communication we are doing in 20 years it has really grown. So, if you are looking at communication to simplify things well that has not actually worked, but uh, that kind of illustrates the infinite model that uh, is being displayed on the screen. So, in the infinite model what we are looking at is a sender and a receiver, but as we have already discussed the receiver becomes the sender and unless somebody dies unless for some reason the communication network breaks down, this process is an infinite process, it goes on endlessly. 
what are barriers? Barriers are things which stop communication. Let us say that uh, I am talking to you and the signals uh, are weak or I am talking to you that the interconnect, uh, internet connection is not there. That is a barrier to communication. Encoding takes place in various ways. At a very basic level, the language that I am using is a language which let us say somebody who is from a rural setup in Odisha or West Bengal may not understand. So, he does not manage to decode this language. So, at a very simple level, I am encoding in the English language and you are decoding in the English language. But if somebody does not know the language, then the person is not able to decode it. That also is a barrier, not being able to decode. Encoding and decoding also takes place at a digital level because you are able to get the signal, uh, digital uh, signals, and they are create they, they create an analog image for you that you can see. So that's again encoding and decoding, responses, acknowledgments, feedback. This is the entire process of transaction that we were talking about, and filters is something which is very significant, and I would like to highlight that uh, in a moment because a little earlier we talked about interpretations and filters are things which help us with interpretations or rather the way that we construct meanings, the way we understand things depend to a great extent on what are known as filters. So, the things which affect communication which disrupt or modify communication have to be understood as filters and barriers and filters can be any of these things like knowledge status, culture, emotions, context, gender, age, all these can act as filters. Let us take an illustration. Uh, this word coke can be interpreted when you are filtering it through these seven or eight things in different ways. Like uh, it can be understood knowledge about where coke is made, uh, what does it consist of and what are the chemical components. Coke whether I mean your social status is affected by your drinking coke culture in which cultures youth cultures may be young kids cultures coke is encouraged there are certain cultures uh, where coke is probably not encouraged emotions cokes excite kids may not excite elderly people context you are feeling thirsty or uh, it is hot you want coke gender you might uh, uh, be influenced to drink something else depending on whether you are a man or a woman age, many aged people do not feel like having it. So, you see that the same object or the same stimuli in this case which happens to be the same stimulus which happens to be in this case the word coke and the image of coke can elicit different kinds of responses. And uh, the various components that we have outlined on the left hand side uh, are very going to be very, very significant in the generic context of soft skills as well because they play a very influential role in how you are perceived, whether you are perceived uh, positively or negatively, how you perform when it comes to being good at soft skills or not. Now, talking about barriers, I have already shared with you what barriers are. Let us say that uh, you start off with the assumption that you do not have anything to learn about soft skills. Now, this is a kind of a bias. Now, if you have this kind of a bias, then you would not be interested in listening to this talk. You would switch it off. So, it acts as a barrier. When we are talking about emotions, you are disturbed or you are extremely happy, you are not focused, you may not feel like listening to anything. So, that acts as a barrier. Medium, as I told you, this medium may be break down at any particular point of time. External things uh, or the language is a hurdle, you do not know the language that can create a problem. Noise and interference we have already illustrated. Now, at the end of uh, this uh, brief introduction, uh, we will look at the summary of key points because they were going to help us for each of the talks that I am going to give you. We will have a brief summary of key points that you can always quickly look at to juggle your memories. And uh, it is important to realize that uh, communication or an introduction to communication does not end here because there are different categories of communication, different uh, uh, ways that we communicate, channels of communication which we have not elaborately discussed until this point of time. So, we shall be looking at those issues in the talks to follow and the talk that is supposed to follow is again about communication because as I told you it is very relevant in the context of soft skills 
and I would like to illustrate some of the relevant points related to that. Thank you.